Maybe the most basic exponential function is f of x equals 2 to the x. The reason it's called exponential is because the variable is an exponent. Uh, we can do a table to do the graph x and y. Let's take negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 as outputs. Then when x is equal to negative 2, we have 2 to the negative 2 which is one over two to the two, and this is one quarter. When we do negative one, two to the negative one is one over two, which is just one half. Zero, two to the zero is one. Remember that every number different from zero to the power of zero is one, and two to the one is two, and two to the two is four. When we plot these points, we will get uh, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, negative 1 half, and 2, negative 1 quarter. And we notice that it doesn't matter what input we take. This is always going to be a positive number. And then if x is very small, like two to the negative seven is one over two to the seven, which is one over 128, which is a very small number. But then here we have that y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote and the function grows very fast. For example, if x is equal to 20, then 2 to the 20 is equal to 1 million 48,576. And when you reach 20, it will be extremely difficult to graph the output. Uh, this is the exponential function. Um, another exponential function that is very typical is f of x equal 1 half to the power of x. In this case, if we do the table, x and y, and we select the same numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, we notice that f of negative 2 is 1 half to the negative 2, and this is 1 over 1 half a square, and this is 1 over 1 quarter, which is 4. Uh, in the same way, this is just 2. Zero, every number different from zero to the power of zero is one, and one half to the one is one half, and one half squared is one half times one half, which gives us one quarter. And then the graph of this function looks like this. Negative two, four, negative one, two, uh, zero, one, one, one half, and one quarter. Actually, uh, we can see that one graph is a reflection of the other, and that's not a coincidence. And the reason is that this can be written as 2 to the negative 1 to the power of x, and this is 2 to the negative x, which means that this function is essentially this one when we change x with negative x, and for that reason is the reflection across the y-axis. In general, any function like this, f of x equal a to the x. If a is bigger than 1, then the function looks like this, essentially. It's a sketch. This would be a good sketch. And if a is smaller than 1, but positive, we are only going to consider when the base is a positive number. Then, in this case, the graph looks something similar like this. Right? Notice that a equal 1 is just a constant function because 1 to any power would be uh, just 1. Uh, notice that, as I said before, uh, these functions are always positive and they are injective, they are 1 to 1. Therefore, we can think about the inverse. Then, what would be the inverse of this function? In this case, to compute the inverse of this function, 
we write 2 to the x equal y and essentially we need to solve for x. This inverse function is called log in base 2 of x. Remember that if we want to compute log in base 2 of 10, then we need to solve this equation, 2 to the x equals 10. Then the, the x that solves this equation does log in base 2 of 10. Um, with this, we can see the following relation between log in base 2 of a number and 2 to the number. Let's write that down. We have that log in base 2 of b is equal to c if and only if Two to the power of c is b. As we know, when we try to find the inverse of a function, the inverse of a function, we need to solve an equation. And in this case, the equation that we have to solve, it has to do with two to the x, two to the c equal b. Then this is going to be very useful. And this is the definition of log in base two of a number. In general, we can define log in base a of a number b, we define it as the solution of this equation, a to the c equal b. Notice that the log of a number is an exponent, right? and the, in this case, the a is any number bigger than zero. Uh, let's do some examples. If we want to compute log in base 2 of 4, then we have to solve, let's call it dc, then we solve the equation 2 to the c equal 4. We have to find the exponent, and in this case the exponent is 2. Then c must be 2. Uh, let's do another example. Log in base 2 of a square root of 2. If we call this c, then we write 2 to the c equal to a square root of 2, but then in this case the c is equal to 1 half, and that means that log in base 2 of a square root of 2 is equal to 1 half. There are some special cases that has like a special name when a is the Euler number which is approximately 2.71 82 82 then uh, instead of writing log in base e of x we write natural log of x it's called natural log and we abbreviate it like ln ln is an abbreviation for log in base e and you read it as natural log. Usually we denote log in base 10 of x, uh, we just denote it as log of x. Then when we don't see the base, most likely it's because the base is 10. And uh, let's see more examples. Log in base 10 of 1000. Then this is equivalent, notice that this is the key part. This is equivalent to finding the number, if we call this C, we have to find the number C such that 10 to the C is 1000. And 1000 is 10 to the three, and for that reason, the C must be equal to three. Let's solve some equation that has to do with log. Um, let's suppose that we have the following equation log in base 2 of x plus 3 equal to 4. What is x? Then in this case we rewrite the equation. Rewriting the equation uh, give us like a different view of the same equation. Uh, we have that this equation is equivalent to the equation 2 to the 4 equal x plus 3 
and that means that uh, 16 is equal to x plus 3 and therefore x is equal to 13. Then an equation of this form is relatively easy if we rewrite the equation. What happened if we have an equation like this? Log in base A of 3 equal 4. Can we solve for A? Let's see. Let's rewrite this equation. We see this part. Uh, we have that this equation I can write like a to the 4 equal 3 and therefore a is 3 to the 1 quarter, the fourth root of 3, which is approximately equal to 1.31607. Okay, for the last type of equation, we are going to use this property and the calculator. Uh, we're going to use the property that log in base a of any number is equal to natural log of that number over natural log of a. Or you can check that this is also equal to log in base 10. Remember that for base 10, you don't write uh, the, the base of x over log of a and most of the calculators they have a length and they have log. And then uh, let's practice some equations. If you have like a uh, 2 to the x, 5 times 2 to the x minus 3 equal 17. Let's solve for x. Then I'm going to leave the 2 to the x by itself. 5 times 2 to the x equal to 20. And in this case, 2 to the x is just 4. And in this case, we don't need a calculator because we know that x should be 2. But if you want to practice, you can check that uh, from here when you rewrite it, you can write it as log in base 2 of... 4 equal x and let's suppose that you don't know that 2 to the 2 is 4 and you want to use the calculator then you can check that this is equal to natural log of 4 over natural log of 2 you can check that x that this is 2 let's do another example let's suppose that you have an starting amount of money equal to 10,000 and after three years, then you have a 15,000. And you wonder what is the interest rate if that money was compounded continuously. Then let's write if component continuously what is R. Then the formula is A equal P times E to the RT and in this case we have that A is 15,000 equal to 10,000 times E to the R. We don't know R and T is 3. Then we solve for E to the 3R which is equal to 1.5 and then when we rewrite the equation we get that 3 times r is equal to log in base e of 1.5 but remember that log in base e is just natural log then r is natural log of 1.5 over 3 which is approximately equal to 0.135 that means that the interest rate is 13.5%. Let's do one last example. If we want to solve this equation, uh, 3 times 5 to the x equal to uh, 1002. Then in this case, we solve for 5 to the x is, which is 34. 
and then we rewrite the equation, 5 to the x equal 34. The rewriting of the equation is a key part, and here when we rewrite it, we get that x equal log in base 5 of 34, but since some calculators don't have log in base 5 of 34, then we can write it as natural log of 34 over natural log of 5, and this is equal to 2.19105. Notice that we can check that this is approximately the, the right number. If we do 3 times 5 to the 2.19105, we will get 101.9998 and it is very close to 102. The result is not exactly the same, it's because we are approximating here and therefore we get an approximation of the solution.